Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coolum video and another plug side chat. In this video I wanted to talk about why we don't see any police cruisers that are pure battery electric. I know I'm not the only one in thinking how awesome would it be to see a California Highway Patrol Tesla Model S, right, where you got the black paint, the white doors, and you know, basically this awesome sedan that's essentially what uh, California Highway Patrol would be looking for in a sort of uh, interceptor pursuit, just all all purpose cruiser. Unfortunately, the reason for it all ties back to the same fundamental reason and really the only reason electric vehicles are not as good as the internal combustion engine vehicles, right? And that's the energy density of the fuel source. So with an electric vehicle, the problem is, you know, so much of your weight is being tied up in energy storage where it's not for something like a, an internal combustion engine vehicle running on really dense fossil fuels where, where half the weight of the uh, fuel source is really in the atmosphere. So it's like you're, you're getting a bonus because all of the air that you suck in to burn up your petrol, well, it doesn't cost you anything in terms of weight. And that's not the case for electric vehicles. And yeah, I know there are law enforcement vehicles, typically things like parking enforcement vehicles. There are, are some all electric vehicles in law enforcement and city and municipal use. But the problem specifically for law enforcement when it comes to pursuit vehicles, cruisers, that sort of thing, is they have basic requirements about performance, well, those electric vehicles exceed. You know, they typically drive about 30,000 miles a year. Not really an issue for an electric vehicle. You know, even the daily shift isn't really that big of a deal in terms of how many miles a vehicle, uh, like an electric vehicle, can drive in a single day. The big issue is they have cargo capacity requirements. The minimum for a California Highway Patrol cruiser is 1,500 pounds of cargo capacity. That's supposed to support, I believe it's five officers and all equipment. So the idea is you should be able to fit five adults and all of their equipment into the vehicle and be within the cargo capacity uh, rating for the vehicle. Well, 1,500 pounds doesn't seem like a lot. And by internal combustion standards, it really isn't, but that's because what they call the tear or the unladen weight, or you'll even hear it referred to as a curb weight of the vehicle, where it's the vehicle's weight in running form minus any passengers or any additional equipment thrown in there. Uh, that's that basic unladen curb weight, uh, the tear weight. And that's much, much lower for internal combustion engine vehicles because they don't have a 500 to 1,000 pound, maybe 1,200 pound battery pack in the vehicle. And so what you have is these larger sedans like what the Highway Patrol is using now, uh, they, they do have that excess cargo capacity because they're not carrying around a battery. Where if you look at the Tesla Model S, their cargo capacity is only uh, about 1,000 pounds plus or minus, right, maybe a couple hundred, depending on the size of the battery. Uh, the Bolt EV actually overachieves in this uh, regard because its cargo capacity, what they refer to as the gross vehicular weight rating, GVWR, uh, is actually within a, a couple hundred pounds less than that, really, of the Sonic, which is essentially a similar platform. So really what we'd need to see before we'd see any sort of electric vehicle like a Tesla Model S taking over sort of a highway patrol cruiser, police cruiser duty, our batteries are going to have to come down in weight. Now, it's still possible, right, with current technology, but it seems like it would need to be a highly customized vehicle. It's possible that you could do a Tesla Model S with a... Tesla Model 3 battery possibly and get the 
cruiser weight down to the point where it meets the performance requirements, it meets the driving range and distance requirements, yet it also meets the requirements for carrying 1,500 pounds of cargo and officers. Because when you can do that, then all of a sudden we have the option of using electric vehicles for that purpose. And I feel like that's going to be a very important thing because really right now you have all of these state agencies wanting to make regulations and wanting to make laws and pushing for citizens essentially to be using uh, non-fossil fuel driven vehicles. And I agree with that completely. But if you're going to do that uh, as a state agency, as an organization, you need to be out front leading as well. This means cities and municipalities, they need to be using electric vehicles for their fleets. That means that state agencies like California Highway Patrol and other other organizations, they need to be using electric vehicles for their fleets. And when that starts to happen and we see a 30, 40, 50% reduction in battery weight, which is coming, and these cargo capacities can be what they are, and the vehicular capacities can be what they are, yet you're running on electricity instead of gasoline, that's really going to be the major turning point. People are going to see vehicles by government agencies that don't require fossil fuel. And really, if they're good enough for something like a police cruiser, it's going to be good enough for pretty much anyone. Uh, and I, I know this has even been a concern with something like the Tesla Semi is what is its tear weight, because really when you're shipping, that is actually the concern is you, you have an overall weight for the vehicle, whatever is left for cargo, that's what creates the lim limitation. So if a battery powered Semi is 10,000 pounds heavier than a diesel Semi, that's 10,000 pounds of cargo that you can't carry. Now, I don't think that the difference is that great for something like the Tesla Semi. It's probably only four to 5,000 pounds, but still some of these newer modern diesel powered uh, semis, they only weigh in at maybe 15, 16,000 pounds. The Tesla Semi is 20 to 21,000, maybe 22,000 pounds. You know, like I said, that's four or five, 6,000 pounds uh, of cargo that it can't carry. So really that is the, the big hurdle right now for electric vehicles to get over. So if we can make the batteries denser and we can drop the weight while maintaining the range and the performance, uh, then we'll finally be able to start making a transition where all sorts of vehicle types can be electric instead of internal combustion. And that's really to me going to be the big turning point. So we need to keep focusing on the tear weight, the unladen weight, the uh, curb weight, and making sure that we can improve that ratio to the gross vehicular weight rating, that total, that total overall cargo capacity, because uh, that is important to a lot of people. And the people that it's important to drive very high profile vehicles. These are the ones that people see on a daily basis. These are the ones that you know, some people look up to in terms of their performance and capabilities. So that's that's something to to see for the future and plan for. And uh, it is right now the single weakness that electric vehicles have in comparison to internal combustion engine vehicles. Uh, let me know what you think. If you agree, if you disagree, what do you think is holding electric vehicles back? If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It does help out the channel. And uh, thank you for watching.